What is up my friends and welcome to the 24th episode of our Let's Play series as Roma with your fellow comrade Summary. Uh, we are going to take the subjugation option. Faction has joined our enemies and we have taken a bunch of our attrition. However, before we jump into the campaign, I'm going to give a quick summary of what we achieved in the last episode. In the previous episode, we managed to conquer Pannonia as well as Thracia and Moesia and we managed to liberate a bunch of uh, Scythian factions in Sarmatia as well as Scythia itself and of course also in uh, Dacia. However, the, uh, the objective of this episode would be to next up conquer Dacia itself uh, as well as Magna Germania and Hercynia, uh, thereby, you know, securing the Elbe River as well as the Carpathian mountain range frontier, which is the much shorter frontier, which the Romans had desired but were unable to hold on to. And had they hold on, held on to this, uh, history would have been very different. But of course, due to the Battle of Teutoburg, somewhere over here in Magna Germania, uh, the Romans were unable to hold on to this and as well uh, they had to let go of Dacia as a result as it was uh, more vulnerable without the Elbe River frontier uh, kind of supporting it. However, in this campaign we are going to play an alternative history in which Rome was successful in all her desires and endeavors and thereby conquer the Elbe River Carpathian mountain frontier significantly reducing our border from the Rhine River, Danubian River frontier. That was the historical outcome of the realistic Rome. However, that being said and done, let us quickly hop into the campaign and level up all of the characters that we can level up. Uh, we can go ahead and level up this character over here in Egyptos, uh, thereby getting even more, uh, you know, economy in Egyptus. Uh, meanwhile, we can also level up characters over here. Might as well give him the uh, campaign range movement. And with that, we have leveled up all our characters. Now let's have a quick look at our notifications because we did notice some attrition for Legio 4 Skitika as well as Legio 5 Apollinaris. I believe Legio 5 Apollinaris is actually, uh, you know, in the sea. And that is why he took attrition uh, meanwhile with uh, legio uh, 15 apollinaris we have them in a province with limited supplies and therefore he was taking attrition meanwhile we will uh, make him uh, you know deploy in the port of panty capeon so that he doesn't take more attrition that being said and done let's have a quick look at all of our provinces uh, for now everything seems to be fine uh, we have really good cultural conversion in Britannia. It is no longer uh, Britannic culture. Instead, it is now completely Latin culture. So that is definitely a good thing. Uh, however, that being said and done, let us continue to upgrade uh, the provinces that we recently conquered. Thracia and Moesia as well as Pannonia. Uh, that being said and done, also, as you can see, we have gone ahead and renamed all of the settlements within Thracia a Moesia. And we have also gone ahead and renamed the ones in Pannonia to their Roman historical equivalents. Uh, we also have uh, several armies that are ready to invade Dacia. We have Legio 30 Ulpia Victris under our Imperator Augustus himself. And we also have a Legio 2 Italica to support him in that conquest of Dacia. Meanwhile, in Pannonia, we have three legionaries. We have Legio 1 Italica under Marcus Agrippa, and they have the famous Ala Galorum, a Pannonorium Cataphracta, which is a cataphract type unit. Uh, apart from that, we have Legio 1 Adriatrix with another cataphract type unit, a Sarmatian Lancer type unit, as well as Legio 1 Minerva with a Roman cataphract type unit uh, so definitely some really nice cavalry units right here they aren't uh, speed 3 uh, you know upgrades yet that is because we are still trying to upgrade this building over here meanwhile in Ratia itself uh, we kind of have a legion over here Legio 7 Gemini and it is taking a bit of attrition which is rather surprising because I believe we have a supply a building over here 
which isn't really supplying them. So we're going to move them into Virunum before they can take any more attrition and hopefully uh, that should stop the attrition. And the idea would be to kind of invade Herkinia from the south, uh, taking out Kasurgis as we are still at war with uh, the Swaybors and the Ari, but we are also going to be at war with the Kimbros as well as the Chaosi. Um, that being said and done, let us go ahead and move our spy towards Flavum. Uh, hopefully, they do have a big army over there. So we might have a very interesting battle trying to take over Flavum. So uh, let's go ahead and without any further ado, declare that war against Flavum. Call in all of our allies. One of our allies has refused to join us, but that is a minor nomadic faction. So I'm not too concerned. Meanwhile, I want to move a little bit ahead. And can we actually reinforce? We cannot, so we are going to withdraw a little bit so that we can attack in the next turn. And if he attacks us, I'm not too concerned. We have two legions over here, so we can easily deal with that situation. Meanwhile, uh, over here, uh, south of Ubursus, we have Legio 2 Eduitrix, and uh, they can kind of move up to Ubursus. And if Ubursus is ungarrisoned, then we are at a serious advantage. We do have Legio to uh, Legio 10 Gem uh, Gemina, as well as Legio 18 Gallica, so can definitely do something out of that. Let's go ahead and keep moving this army Legio 1 Germanica towards Tolifordum. Uh, that is going to be the next target. We can go ahead and attack this army, and I am going to go ahead and do that. I would want for him to kind of withdraw so that I can uh, safely cross this river crossing and as such now they are kind of isolated over here and uh, excuse me sorry there was just a cell phone notification all right and uh, we can pretty much just wipe out this army now it should be a very easy auto resolve uh, but I think we should fight this as this is a Kimbros type army so we might have a very interesting fight on our hand I'm gonna quick save over here uh, and go ahead and fight the battle and I will see you all in the battle all right welcome to the battle we have uh, Caesar's favorite legion uh, Legio 10 Gemina uh, up against a Kimbrosi army and of course, uh, you know, we have deployed once again in our typical legionary formation that I kind of like. And uh, it is raining, so it's quite cinematic and uh, it's a beautiful battle. However, uh, you know, we're pretty much going to fight this battle as quickly as we can. I'm going to fast forward a little bit over here so that the battle commences a lot quicker. Uh, this army is no match for us. I mean, they are the Kimbros, which means they have some really good uh, melee units. However, you know, we are Roman legionaries and we are definitely superior. However, I did want to showcase a battle against the Kimbros. So that is why I've decided to kind of fight this one out. And uh, we soon we get into position. Uh, we kind of move a bit too close. So we're not able to uh, throw our precursor javelins. We managed to throw just a little bit. Uh, however, you know, uh, by trying to be a little bit hasty, uh, we didn't manage to, you know, uh, deploy our uh, defensive formation properly. And as you can see, in many areas, our defensive formation has been kind of uh, the same glitch that you have seen in the previous episode. So right now, my main focus is trying to readjust my defensive formation to face the enemy. Um, across my entire front line that is what i'm trying to do and uh pretty much my cavalry has free reign over here because they don't have any enemy cavalry but they do have a numerical advantage as far as infantry is concerned so i straight off the bat start to move my legionary cohorts to the flanks in order to prevent that encirclement meanwhile over here i'm not paying attention and this unit kind of gets charged but it is a good cavalry unit and we are going to be throwing a lot of Pila into this unit. And uh, since the one unit is charged, we can just simply easily encircle this enemy unit. We have taken a couple of casualties, uh, which we wouldn't have typically taken. But since we have encircled this enemy, 
uh, we will be able to completely wipe it out really easily it's gonna be charged from all directions it's gonna be devastating for this unit absolutely gonna lose their entire semblance of formation and as you can see they're taking a lot of casualties and they're already wavering they're dropping like flies meanwhile on the right flank we have managed to stabilize and protect our flank however one unit manages to get into melee with our skirmishers who aren't too bad in melee situation uh, noticing that i order uh, several of my other legionary cohorts to kind of uh, reinforce them uh, in order to tip the balance meanwhile our cavalry manages to perform a rear charge on this unit on the right flank so things are looking quite good on the right flank meanwhile in the center uh, you know we are taking a fair bit of casualties because these germanic swordsmen are actually pretty good uh, they might not be uh, you know the best however uh, they do have a lot of armor penetration so they're going to be very good against legionary troops uh, they might not outright win against legionary troops, but uh, for the most part, they're going to be able to, you know, uh, dish out some real punishment if left in combat for a very long time. Meanwhile, this spear unit is in a very bad position. It's being sandwiched by two units, uh, but I am going to sandwich that sandwich, um, and we're going to have a club sandwich over here. So, pretty much, uh, we're going to try to wipe out this uh, left flank so that we can roll down the enemy front lines. As you can see, uh, we're starting to take quite a bit of casualties on our front lines. So, um, you know, situation is a little bit desperate in the center. Um, this battle is actually more than I had anticipated. Uh, however, you know, that makes for an interesting battle nonetheless. Meanwhile, on the right flank, we are trying to move our cavalry around. We're trying to, you know, uh, wipe out. That is essentially what I end up doing eventually and over here we have completed our encirclement of this enemy unit i decide uh, to dedicate one unit to flank into this unit since i do have a gap available and they should be able to inflict quite a bit of casualties meanwhile we have managed to rat out this unit and they should pretty much be taking a lot of kills An interesting animation over there where he's gonna fight and he's gonna get stabbed right in the neck there we go boom <laughs> i like some of these animations they are very very nice and uh, you get to enjoy them as long as you're playing a replay and uh, pretty much over here we're gonna charge into the backs of some units i guess uh, try to uh, you know alleviate some of the pressure on our front lines but as you can see our front lines are not faring too well we're losing decisively on multiple uh, you know multiple locations over here our cohorts Aqu uh, aquitanian cohorts are losing decisively over here the combat is even meanwhile over here we're losing decisively yet again so our main objective is to try to encircle the enemy as quickly as we can we decide to charge into these two missile units because they are keeping down our units pinned over here for no reason so if we can get them off the battlefield then uh, we can free up a couple of these units which will be very crucial uh, meanwhile, our other cavalry is just busy routing out the enemy units. Uh, ideally, they should be involved in the fighting, but I don't kind of use them in the fighting. And I kind of realized that, so I kind of pulled them back towards the fighting because, uh, you know, the priority is, of course, alleviating the pressure on our center and, uh, you know, trying to help. And uh, in order to do that, I have committed another cohort into the center. Uh, in order to reinforce that center meanwhile i'm also moving up my first cohort in order to reinforce that center meanwhile on the left flank we have dealt with the enemy uh, units over there so we are trying to encircle the enemy over here on the right flank one of our units is completely surrounded even though we have the numerical superiority over here it's losing decisively it's completely surrounded so we need to issue orders uh, to get all of these inactive units into the fight as quickly as possible however now that uh, you know i've noticed that my cavalry is free we're going to perform cycle charges try to break the enemy front lines before they can uh, deal any more casualties to my core units and uh, as such as you can see we're managing to break uh, some of that center and alleviate some of the pressure on my units however 
This unit is still losing decisively, so we are trying our level best to charge into that unit and uh, hopefully route them out before they can you know, dish out some more casualties to that unit. Meanwhile, over here on the right flank, we have uh, decided to kind of encircle the enemy, while on the left flank, we have again decided to encircle the enemy. So uh, the situation right now is that we have uh, just the enemy right flank and the enemy left flank to deal with, and uh, pretty much the center has been uh, rectified and uh, we still have a unit over here that is taking some casualties uh, so we're going to try our level best to assist it before it takes a lot of casualties we're moving in our cohorts unit uh, trying to waver out those units meanwhile over here on the left flank our flanking maneuver has uh, completed so we have completely wiped out that right flank over there and uh, all that remains is the left flank and of course this left center flank. And that being said and done, uh, we decide to charge some of the cavalry to wipe out the retreating units. Meanwhile, our first cohort has decided to kind of join the fight uh, to kind of support our auxiliary troops over here. And uh, that being said and done, we have uh, some units that are going to make a flanking maneuver into the backs of that left flank. Meanwhile, we have a couple of cavalry that is still moving around, trying to wipe out the enemy units. We have our uh, General of the Legion himself uh, getting involved in the route. And that being said and done, we are nearly done with the battle. All that remains is the General unit who is staying really firm and fighting despite losing decisively. And uh, I mean, that's full respect to him, but he is going to get charged by the another unit of Aquitanian cohorts and as such he should be taking quite a lot of casualties and uh, with that we will have won the battle we have wiped out every single unit but the general still stays firm which is a last stand by the Kimbros which is actually quite interesting that they are staying so firm in the face of the first cohort as well as being completely surrounded by two other cohorts so full respect to that, <laughs> I noticed that uh, you know they're not going to be uh, retreating anytime soon and it's actually really uh, surprising that they hold out for so long so uh, I decide to put an end to it maybe, I guess, eventually by uh, you know performing a cavalry charge. However, that's all that's remaining. As you can see, most of our units are busy wiping out their units. Uh, we do have some uh, reinforcements coming in. I kind of forgot about that. So maybe that is why this general unit isn't actually wavering. So right now I decide that, uh, you know, I've had enough. So we are going to try our level best to uh, wipe out this general unit. Meanwhile, we're trying to reform our new front line. Uh, in order to face this incoming threat so we are going to fast forward a little bit over here so that we kind of uh, reach that future where you know our new front lines clash so pretty much just waiting <laughs> this general unit is really holding its own However, they are now flanked, thoroughly flanked, and they should be uh, retreating. Meanwhile, the front lines over here have kind of engaged. We have a phalanx type unit that could be problematic, so we have to watch out for that one. However, for now, it isn't engaged, but it is soon getting involved in the fighting, which means it can uh, dish out some serious punishment to these legionaries. However, this is the reason why I stay a little bit further away as well as no longer deploy that defensive formation so that they cannot get uh, a lot of units uh, to face against their spears. Meanwhile, uh, you know, the intention was to use our left flank cavalry to kind of flank around. However, the en enemy AI is being uh, really smart into sending their melee troops to deal with my cavalry. So my cavalry cannot get involved. So the idea is to use the cavalry on that right flank to attack instead. So the idea when this kind of happens is you want to send some troops to kind of pin these units down, uh, serve as a distraction and I think that's what I'm trying to do over here with my skirmisher type units. Uh, basically try to pin down these units so that my cavalry can move about freely 
Meanwhile, on the right flank, as you can see, the orders have been issued for this cavalry to move around, and they're going to swing around and hit that missile unit. And uh, once they manage to do that, uh, then we pretty much have an advantage. Meanwhile, my most depleted Aquitanian cohorts decides to join the fighting, but I command it to do otherwise. I don't want it to be wiped out. And as you can see over here, we are nearly done with all of the units being distracted. And for some reason, I have uh, zero idea as to why I don't really charge that missile unit. I should be. And uh, there we go, we charge that missile unit. Over here, this melee unit manages to catch up to my cavalry, unfortunately. And then I issue an order for two of my cavalry units to charge into the back of these phalanx units. Now, phalanx units are incredibly vulnerable from rear charges, as you can see. They're going to try to move and respond to the situation, which means they will start taking a lot of casualties in the process. And they are already wavering as a result of that. So really good charge over there, really good charge over here. Meanwhile over here, I'm still ignoring the situation. Um, not intentionally, obviously, it is a micromanagement error. However, with that, uh, you know, by writing out the phalanx unit over here, as well as the missile units over here, the entire enemy army breaks. And of course, I pursue them and uh, I end up killing a lot of the stragglers. And I will see you all in the campaign, I guess. And with that, down goes the first armies of the Suevos. And we are going to enslave all the captives. At your command. Excellent. And technically, Legiot and Gemina can once. move back for some replenishment in Vesontio. Go ahead, put him up in the patrol stance. Give him some army traditions. And let's go ahead and attack the Bruzes. Uh, should be a very good auto resolve now and uh, we could reinforce with this army but this army will take unnecessary losses so we can just auto resolve with this army alone and uh, we are going to peacefully occupy Ubersus we are going to convert it into a military recruitment uh, region and therefore we will need that Peregrini population class as you can see it does give access to more Germanic units so we are just simply going to hold on to it in that form. Although we have recruited all the Germanic units that we kind of need. Uh, that being said and done, let us focus in Dacia, the situation down south over here. We can go ahead and attack Palandava. Uh, should be an easy auto resolve. Let's go ahead and peacefully occupy the settlement. We can once again uh, create a new auxiliary barracks and get access to uh, the Dacian cavalry which is actually a very good cavalry unit and uh, meanwhile we can send Imperator Augustus to Malva and uh, capture the settlement over there it's once again a very good auto resolve and uh, we are going to peacefully occupy that settlement as well so we are nearly done with our conquest of Dacia as well and uh, things are looking quite good well, but that being said and done we can even move we have another legion all the way over here he might take a slight bit of attrition crossing the alps during spring we'll have to wait and see and he seems to have stuck to the road so he has managed not to take that attrition which is always a welcome sight uh, meanwhile we can send even Leg legio one edwitrix to sarmis zekutusa and uh, it's not a very good auto resolve but we can go ahead and auto resolve it we don't have any enemies in the nearby vicinity we're going to peacefully occupy that settlement as well go ahead dismantle the buildings we don't need and build up the buildings that we do want to you know level up that being said and done let's have a quick look at Dacia itself we have just one hostile army in the region and it is uh, nine stacks so uh, we will definitely have to deal with it otherwise it might be able to take some of our weaker settlements that have a lower garrison however that will have to wait until the next turn meanwhile in this turn itself we can push up with Legia 1 Minerva and uh, hopefully we can attack uh, Istros in the next turn maybe just maybe we can scare off the Germans and we can scare off this German as well and uh, we are going to just retreat a slight bit deploy into a fortified stance protecting that 
uh, pass and thereby protecting the entire province of Venonia. However, that being said and done, quick look at our characters. If we can level up anyone, we can level up the army traditions of uh, Legia 1 8 Vatrix. So let's go ahead and do that. Excellent. I believe I took the right army traditions, not entirely sure. Um, the best way to check that out is Allegio 30 Ulpia Victress and uh, Frontier Garrison as well. Okay, so I did take the one that gives uh, reduced uh, attrition from siege, but that's not too bad. So I guess I'm happy with that. That being said and done, I can go ahead, end the turn, and I will see you all in the next turn when I'm ready to continue my conquest of Magna Germania as well as Hyrcania. And uh, with that, we will conclude this episode as well. Alright, welcome to the next turn. The mission has been successful. Some characters have leveled up, so let's quickly go ahead and level them up. This guy has reached his maximum level. Meanwhile, we have character in Achaea itself who has also leveled up. And finally, we should have one more character that's leveled up, I believe. I think it's just the two. Alright, perfect. Yeah, it's just the two. So let's have a quick look at our provinces once again. I think everything seems to be pretty good for now. And uh, yes, we definitely want to build these buildings up. As well as we want to upgrade these buildings as well. And uh, in Dacia, we want to go ahead and maintain our foreign population class. But we're going to build a uh, sanitation building first for that growth rate, definitely. And then later on, we can focus on uh, the foreign population class building. Which is not that important because uh, one of the provinces is owned by a foreign uh, power. Not really a power, but a foreign entity, which means they should be contributing towards, uh, you know, the cultural uh, debuffs in that region. Having said and done, Legio 10 Gemina is almost completely replenished, so we are going to move him into Bursus. Meanwhile, we are going to move Legio 2 Edvatrix uh, into Vesontio in order to replenish. And uh, he should be able to replenish in Bursus because the only character that needs replenishment is an auxiliary troop which comes from the Peregrini population class. So definitely he will be able to replenish in this turn. However, speaking of replenishment and of course attacking, we are going to go ahead and attack Tullifurdum. Uh, we can just auto-resolve it, although the auto-resolve isn't that good. Uh, it's pretty much the last settlement of the Kimbros and as you can see the Kimbros just have a last remaining army over there and they are no real threat to us. Good Meanwhile we can friend. establish a trade what agreement with the Carpi us. who Come are at war with so the Kimbros and the words. Budini. So I don't really mind and I'm actually not going to ask them for any payment because I want to keep them yes. economically strong the so that they kind of prosper as opposed to the Budini. Meanwhile, the Budini itself, the uh, we cannot establish a trade agreement. They are fairly hostile towards us. And over here, we are starting to take some casualties, uh, some attrition due to the fact... Uh, oh, never mind. I thought we were running out of supplies, but we do have a supply line all the way from Nem Nematicum. And uh, let's go ahead and attack Flevum. Uh, could be a pretty good battle, but uh, just a very quick, I mean, it's not really very professional troops, I must admit, so we might as well just auto-resolve this. It's 83%, and, uh, you know, we can easily auto-resolve it, and uh, we took a fair bit of casualties on that auto-resolve, but we have wiped out the faction, and we are... I believe we should be able to... Uh, okay, I'm gonna put this army into the port so that he can replenish in a single turn. Meanwhile, this army, I wish I could have moved back, but I really can't. So that's a bit of a problem. 
Meanwhile, our spy can go further north into Germania. And we can also send a Legio 1 Germanica towards Alibu, which we are going to release. Uh, speaking of that, we can go ahead and turn off the taxation in Ebursus as well, as well as in Dacia. Let's go ahead and do that. Perfect. Now over here in Herkinia, we can go ahead and try to attack a little bit more. And uh, with that, they should be kind of cornered, which means we can attack with Agrippa, the settlement of Istros. And uh, we are going to go ahead, continue to push this army. Should get a very good auto resolve over there. And uh, we're going to enslave all the captives. Our general has leveled up and he has also got some army traditions, which is always very nice. And uh, let's go ahead and get this. Meanwhile, we can get the campaign range movement as well as the replenishment rate. Uh, over here with Agrippa, just a quick look to see his abilities. That all seems to be fine. Uh, we have this army over here that could potentially attack Akunkum. However, I can move Legio 1. Advatrix into uh, Quincum as well as in order to deal with this threat over here I could move Legia to Italica to intercept over there this guy will retreat but he won't be able to retreat far enough and as such we can easily auto resolve that and slave all the captives and now we have Dacia firmly in our grip so let's uh, kind of move back towards Singadun and uh, with Legio 30 Ulpia Victress, we are also going to move towards Singidun in this fashion. And then up north towards Akunkum. Excellent. With that, we do have another army here as a general. So I'm not entirely sure uh, if I should go ahead and kill it, but I am just going to let it be. Meanwhile, quick look at all of our characters, any of the characters that we can level up. We should go ahead and level up and we're going to take these three abilities that give the campaign range movement, which is significantly better than the siege uh, ability. So definitely, uh, you know, in the army that we couldn't manage to do it or that we mismanaged, uh, that's a bit of a problem. However, over here, what we want to do is we quickly want to, you know, build up once again, an auxiliary barracks. Dismantle all of the other buildings. And uh, there we go. That's perfect. So we will eventually need to, you know, swap out armies again in order to allow for the replenishment. However, that being said and done, uh, we can go ahead and attack... Um, Istros, we're gonna quick save over here so that we can get a look at some of our cataphract units. Uh, they have some decent armies, they even have uh, cataphracts or horse archer cataphracts of their own. So, this should be quite an interesting fight. And uh, we are going to go ahead, quick save over here, hop into the battle, and I will see you all in the battle. All right, welcome to the battle. We have deployed in our typical formation. And we are up against a simple garrison as well as a uh, few good units. And I kind of, uh, you know, did not realize that this uh, army is going to be reinforced from an army from the Ingiones. So, or Ingiones, very tough to pronounce that name. So, um, pretty much uh, this battle ends up being an 18 minute battle as a result of it. Uh, however, as you can see, uh, the enemy units are slowly moving towards us. Uh, I decide to kind of push up a little bit eventually so that, uh, you know, I can fire up. There we go. This is a mistake that's happening over here. My ballistae are busy firing at this singular cavalry unit. Uh, ideally, they should be firing at this blob over here because they will be able to rack up a lot more kills. However, that being said and done, we're moving up our entire legion a little bit closer so that we can get involved in the fighting as quickly as possible. Uh, meanwhile, we're going to be in trouble if this unit decides to charge downhill against a sword unit. However, they decide not to 
and in return we uh, exchange some missile fire causing some casualties amongst them uh, we now throw our pila which are a lot more effective as you can see we managed to completely melt that unit and oh jeez completely destroyed it's, it's amazing that they were still only wavering and not instantly routed out the battlefield uh, noticing that uh, you know uh, I have made mistakes in uh, you know assigning my defensive formation I do it a little bit more meticulously in this battle and uh, the main feature of this battle of course is going to be our cataphract units uh, Ale Galorum at Penanorium Cataphracta and as you can see uh, these cataphract units are looking really nice. We're going to change the reshade over there a little bit so that we can see them a little bit better. And a uh, really heavy looking cavalry unit with really good armor. And we are going to charge into the enemy cavalry uh, with these units. And you'll just see how powerful these units are. And guys, I do apologize for that noise. There's a little bit of construction going out uh, outside, and uh, uh, <laughs> you can hear some drilling going on for a while. But uh, I guess it is what it is. Hopefully, it isn't too loud and disturbing. And of course, as you can see, we are slowly encircling the enemy. We're going to hide the, uh, the foliage over here because we can't really see what's going on. And uh, our cavalry has done a good job routing out that enemy cavalry. So they're going to keep chasing them uh, as I want to get rid of that cavalry entirely. Meanwhile, on the right flank, we're moving our other ca cataphract cavalry in an attempt to eventually charge into the flanks of this cavalry. So... What's going on is that we are nicely encircling the enemy in the center, meanwhile using our own cavalry to kind of charge into this uh, horse archer uh, kind of cavalry unit. And these are mercenary horse archers, Sarmatian lancers, um, and they're pretty good actually. Uh, but what I end up doing is I end up, uh, you know, faking that I am going around them, but then I decide to charge into them. And that's one of the ways you can catch up to uh, horse archer cavalry and we managed to catch up to them. They're going to lose decisively if they keep deciding that they want to run away from us. And as you can see, they're losing quite a lot of units. So the last thing you want to do is actually run away from a cav engagement. Uh, the only way you can pull out of a cav engagement is to dedicate another unit to hold down these cavalry units and then move your cavalry units uh, to safety. However, deciding that I've, uh, you know, achieved uh, a lot of kills and I'm pretty happy with the results, I've decided to pull my own cavalry behind because they could get pinned down by this uh, spear unit. Meanwhile, uh, this cavalry is now on the left side of the battlefield, which means I can use my other cataphracts to charge into this cavalry. We have inflicted about 50% casualties in a single charge against that cavalry, so that's just how powerful uh, these... Uh, these uh, cataphract units are and as you can see they're making a move towards the enemy cavalry and uh, will very soon I initiate in order to charge against that cavalry so we're just trying to form up uh, really nicely uh, so that uh, you know we are able to get that charge off and uh, once again we're going to charge into the the unit if we manage to catch up to it we will inflict some casualties there you go, we managed to catch up to it, which means we will inflict some casualties. Meanwhile, this other unit over here manages to get a very, very nice charge off against this unit, and they are going to quickly uh, waver and break. Meanwhile, we have the pikemen over here, so better to pull out our cavalry instead of, uh, you know, stay in the fight and take some casualties. But as of now, you can see our cavalry is performing really well. They have only taken two casualties amongst four units. And uh, we noticed that this cavalry has returned, so we're going to charge back into it. So there's absolutely no break for these mercenary Sarmatian Lankofo, right? And uh, there we go. We start to chase against these units. 
Uh, one of the things that is in our disadvantage over here is that we don't have that level 3 horse for this unit yet. Uh, however, eventually once we get it, we will be really quick with these units and we will be able to catch up to the enemy cavalry. But however, we're still able to catch up to these Lonkophori. Uh, managed to maybe get a couple of kills. They are wavering. And there we go. We get a couple of kills and they break and they run off the battlefield. Uh, and as such, we have uh, done quite well. Let's have a look at this guy to get absolutely surrounded and killed as a result of it. Oh, there we go. Boop. <laughs> okay, that was very anticlimactic. However, we have uh, the entire enemy uh, army that's engaging our front lines. We've kind of arranged our front lines into an inverted crescent in order to encircle the enemy. Uh, realizing that, uh, you know, my legionary cohorts are free, so we are starting our maneuvers with our legionary cohorts in an attempt to encircle the enemy. And this is the point where I noticed that we have actually a reinforcing army from the Inguiones uh, that is joining the battle. So I decide to kind of pull out my cavalry eventually and uh, try to actually charge into this cavalry over here. This is the last remaining uh, mercenary Sarmatian Lonkophori. So uh, we are going to go ahead and charge at it. And pretty much uh, realizing they're going to let loose a couple of volleys, but then they realize that they're gonna get charged again so they're gonna try to run away uh, however it's gonna be difficult to run away when you are trying to run through a city they do have the advantage because they are a smaller unit in size as of now which means maneuverability wise they will be able to pathfind a lot better uh, however you know I don't really care for them uh, you know running around haywire across the battlefield uh, what I really want to do is I want to kind of keep them away from the fight. So that is pretty much what I've achieved. So I managed to pull back out. And I realized that if I pull back out over here, I will get a very nice clean opportunity to charge against the enemy front lines. And over here, things are not looking too good because we have a bunch of pikemen uh, facing off against our own cohorts. Which is why we are once again not in that defensive formation. So... Uh, we definitely uh, want to be watching out for that. Uh, otherwise, we could take a lot of casualties, especially in this critical uh, junction over here. And these kind of junctions are usually a weak point because you have a kind of angular formation, which means if they manage to kill one unit, it's very easy to flank the other unit uh, and vice versa. So you've got to be very careful. Meanwhile, over here, my cavalry has managed to charge into... Uh, an enemy cavalry unit and these are light shock cavalry units so they should absolutely get melted over here and uh, we meanwhile decide to charge all of our cavalry into the skirmisher units so these guys are Germanic hunters I guess and as such they should be taking a lot of casualties and they should route fairly quickly from the battlefield so as you can see over there very easy uh, to use these uh, cataphract units Meanwhile, I am also going to try to pin the animal, uh, enemy general. And that being said and done, once again, the main focus, as you can see, is in that center. And as you can see in the center, exactly in that location, we are taking a lot of casualties. So we kind of have to resolve that situation real quick. Realizing that, I decide to charge all of my cataphracts into the foliage, into the backs of the enemy units and uh, pretty much alleviate the situation over here so uh, that is pretty much what you kind of want to do uh, right now they're just kind of moving around aimlessly it might seem but i am trying to organize them into um, a uh, proper line so that i can get a clean charge off and it's very important to be patient so that you can get a clean charge off and there we go we begin our charge and uh, a charge against a phalanx unit is absolutely devastating uh, and uh, they will start to take a lot of casualties unless they turn about and if they turn about then they are going to be attacked in the back by our melee units so as you can see they are already wavering they are already taken quite a bit of casualties from that charge meanwhile we are going to keep sending other cavalry units to keep charging at this enemy unit and try to break it and uh, pretty much across the board, that's what's happening with our some uh, with our cataphracts. We are going to try to charge into the enemy rear and try to break them. 
uh, being said and done, we're going to send our skirmishers to kind of reinforce our a unit that has taken quite a bit of casualties and I believe uh, I managed to pull them behind to isolate the spear unit and these guys are actually incredibly mean uh, units but now that they are isolated and they are pushed a little bit deeper they can be surrounded and they can be dealt with so one of the ways you can deal with a, a pike type unit is to actually give ground and then surround them Meanwhile over here we can see uh, the Ingeonis have uh, slowly made it to the battlefield so I have issued orders for my uh, you know, front lines to reorient and over here I'm actually kind of using cohorts 1 Italica to form up our new legionary cohorts uh, you know, slowly and carefully marching up to the enemy. Uh, the enemy is getting into formation a lot quicker than we are so uh, there's a little bit of sense of an urgency to form up quickly before the enemy engages us and uh, meanwhile the enemy general unit is completely surrounded and he is wavering he has been charged in the rear by a group of cataphract units and as such has broken out completely uh, which means we just have a couple more units of the REI to deal with over here and once we deal with them uh, we can focus on the reinforcing in Guione's army So let's go ahead and just fast forward a little bit over here. It's going to lag the game a little bit, but I don't really care. And uh, there we go. Okay, we're managing to wipe out this unit. And now we're going to focus on the fight with the Ingeonis. So as you can see, no real front line happening over here. A little bit of chaotic thing. And the reason being is that while this can, you know, lead my formations vulnerable, as you can see, some of the formations over here are quite vulnerable and uh, their formations have been breached. Uh, the main thing is that uh, a lot of their units are pinned. So right now, as you can see over here in this big, uh, you know, engagement over here, pretty much all of their units are pinned, which means our cavalry can get a free rein to charge into these units and our cavalry are actually really mean on the charge so if they manage to get a really good charge against these units uh, then pretty much uh, you know we will win the battle very easily we have one group of cavalry over there that's slowly making its way around uh, meanwhile trying to search for the other group of cavalry there it is we're gonna start encircling and then we will get a really good bunch of clean charges against the enemy. Alright, we're just waiting for our cavalry to get into position. As of now, there's nothing much else to discuss. Maybe we can have a look at some of the engagements happening over here. Some of the fighting. It's going to be pretty even on uh, most, uh, you know, most instances. But we are going to try to encircle the enemy using our skirmisher units. Now, these skirmisher units are really good. Roman auxiliary skirmisher units. If I pull up the uh, stats, you can see 17 melee attack, 20 melee defense, 37 armor. All right, and 29 overall weapon damage, four of which is melee armor penetration damage. These guys are actually as good as most melee units in the game. It's absolutely insane, absolutely OP. Meanwhile, our cavalry over here is slowly trying to form up. And uh, we can see we have a wavering unit. It's taking quite a bit of casualties. We haven't been really quick with that. So as a, as a result, we're taking a little bit of casualties over there. Uh, but uh, realizing the urgency of the situation, realizing that I have really delayed my action with my cavalry, I decide to push in a charge and uh, there we go, we, we have that charge. A lot of missile units over here which means uh, they should take quite a lot of damage, quite a lot of moral pen penalties. And even over here I'm being really slow for some reason, I should actually charge into it. Uh, really quickly so that I can get a lot of the enemy units to route as quickly as I can as quickly as possible this unit is slowly stabilized realizing the urgency of the situation I send up another cohort to kind of assist and right now we are trying to encircle the enemy completely 
Um, that Legion is still taking a little bit of damage. It's getting a little bit close to that 35 mark and that is actually very dangerous because... Uh, I'm sorry, the 30 mark because if it drops below 30 units, it will be wiped from the campaign and I will have to recruit it once again. So I definitely don't want that to happen, but it is losing men really quickly and there's nothing much I can do. I, it's too risky to pull it out of combat right now because it could... Uh, take a lot of casualties while retreating i should have done it a long time ago uh, but as you can see it is dropping and that is the sense of urgency that's happening right now which is kind of forcing me to uh, charge in from all directions as you can see we're trying to charge in from all directions in order to break the enemy and this is a good sign you can see a lot of them are wavering uh, and if a lot of them are wavering then that's the hope for this unit to kind of survive it's down to 37 men. I've moved my general up in order to, uh, you know, to inspire it to stay in the battle regardless of the uh, situation it's in. And as such, it has managed to survive just by a whisker and I've kind of pulled it back out uh, over there. Uh, that being said and done, we've managed to, uh, you know, rout out most of the enemy units. And it's only a matter of time before the entire enemy army uh, decides that it's had enough. And it's going to start retreating. Um, over here you might think that these two units are still going to put up a fight. But if you kill a lot of these uh, retreating units. Then the balance of power will force them to kind of waver and then break. So with that we have easily won the battle. And I will see you all in the campaign. Alright with that we have uh, captured the settlement of Istros. And we are slowly uniting our... Elba River, Carpathian Mountain Range Frontier. And we are going to peacefully occupy Istros as well. That's your command. And we have a bunch of armies over here, so things are looking a little bit dicey over here. However, we should be able to manage because uh, we will be able to reinforce them in the next turn. However, just to make sure that this army outside the settlement of Istros doesn't get isolated, I'm going to move the other army out as well. And we are going to move just like that so that they are close to each other. In case there's a big fight, we're going to fight it out, of course. Uh, however, with that, I think I am done with this uh, turn. As there's nothing much else to do in this turn by the looks of it and uh, yes i'm gonna go ahead end the turn and i will see you all in the next turn when i'm ready to complete my conquest of Herkinia. and then uh, i will be continuing the fight against the swaybos as well as the ari uh, i will be liberating several factions over here uh, just to make sure that my northern frontiers are pretty secure Alright, welcome to the next turn. It is autumn, which means in the next turn we will have to stop our campaigns in Germania. However, in this turn we are going to achieve quite a lot. So let's go ahead and uh, get the food as well as cultural conversion, really. Uh, meanwhile, Allegia 22 Dietoriana, go ahead get that army upkeep reduction as well as increase our campaign movement. And I think that's about it as far as uh, leveling up characters is concerned. Quick look at all of our provinces once again. And... Uh, Alright. Okay, so over here we want to build that as well as that and that. And over here we want to build that. Excellent. Build a stadium as well as a... Settler, the immigration center. More stadias over here. Excellent. So economy wise, we're, we're looking really good. We're making 380,000 denarii per turn. We have 11 million uh, denarii in the bank and 12 and a half million was where we were at the start of the civil war so you can see it took quite a while to bounce back however our provinces are making a lot of money right now you can see asia is at 221,000 denarii egyptus in second place at 191 
Latium at third place at 188,000 denarii, Africa Pro Consularis at 165, as well as Akea at 148, which is absolutely insane for Akea. Meanwhile, Britannia, food province, is actually raking up 40,000, which is always welcome. Uh, however, that being said and done, let's see if we can actually retreat any of our armies. We can't really retreat this army over here. Uh, but we can move this army here to replenish and of course uh, perhaps we ca we should have some replenishment over here so we could move this army technically over here because this is better for replenishment and we are going to move this army over here hopefully there are no British pirates because uh, if that's the case they could end up taking out Flavum so let's go ahead and deploy him into the settlement. Meanwhile, we have Legia 1 Germanica pushing deeper into Germania itself. And we're going to go ahead and defeat uh, the settlement garrison of Alabu and go ahead and liberate it. We have now the Teutones and we are going to friend, ask a trade agreement. And for that the trade agreement, they're going to join the war against the Swabi. And uh, we should be able to replenish in the settlement so let's just uh, stay put in alabu as much as we can and then next turn we're gonna attack Rigion. so we are slowly pushing into germania meanwhile over here we are going to keep pushing towards kasurgis itself wow they do have a big army in kasurgis which means we could be in a bit of trouble uh, meanwhile over here we are going to exchange our armies go ahead put this army in istros and withdraw the other two armies so that they can get some much needed replenishment uh, all the way down south over here. Go ahead. Meanwhile, uh, Imperator Augustus can move up north towards Akuncum, as well as Legia 2 Italica has completely uh, also uh, replenished, so we can move him as well towards Akuncum. Uh, that being said and done, I think once again. I am done with this turn, it's a pretty short turn and uh, we have had a look at all of our provinces and uh, developed them accordingly. Uh, so we don't have much else to do in this turn. Technically we could actually move these two armies in this fashion. So we can move this army here and uh, can move this army back down south. Meanwhile we can move this army over here. So in this way, uh, we are maintaining our population growth a little bit in Tullifurdum, which means uh, this army should be able to move back and forth between the two settlements in order to replenish. Uh, they won't be able to replenish in this turn, unfortunately. However, in the next turn, if I'm able to reach Aduatuka Tungrorum, uh, then they should be able to replenish quite quickly. And... Uh, once again, we're just nicely uh, cycling our legionaries, uh, bringing up our fresher legionaries to the frontier. Meanwhile, sending back legionaries that have taken a bit of casualties uh, all the way to the back. That being said and done, we can move Legia 13 Gemina back into the port of Nicomedia, as well as we can begin to move Legio for Flavia Felix uh, towards Singedum. Uh, Singidunum and then eventually we want to keep pushing up north the idea is to kind of liberate as many factions as we can up north as we do have some time left for the episode and I do want to showcase that I have well uh, secured my northern frontier oh, with that being said and done let us quickly look at our diplomacy I want to stop our diplomatic agreements with the Parthians as eventually in the next episode we will be culminating the series by attacking Parthia and pretty much uh, dismantling Parthia the same way we are doing with the Swabi and the Arie. Alright, welcome to the next turn. We have an assassination plot so let's promote the suspect. Um, character has leveled up so let's find out who that is. And it is the commander of Legio 20 Valeria Victris. Let's go ahead and give him the abilities as well as some campaign range movement. Excellent. With that, we're going to have a quick look at all of our provinces. If we can uh, level up any buildings, we're going to go ahead and do that. So let's uh, keep cycling through our provinces.
excellent. Right, we have another building over here that we can build. And uh, over here we're gonna build another immigration center. And uh, we're gonna keep prioritizing these immigration centers so that we can drop our Latin culture just a little bit more. And uh, that's always gonna help with our foreign population class, which is kind of what we need uh, when it comes to our auxiliary provinces, especially since we're playing a very long type campaign. Meanwhile, over here, we're taking a little bit of attrition. Let's move over here so that we can kind of replenish. I mean, we could potentially attack Rubion, and I am actually going to go ahead and do that. Don't really care about the attrition a little bit. I mean, I could get caught out by a Germanic army. And if I do, then what I will end up doing is I will, you know, seize my uh, campaigning in Germania. So, as long as I am undefeated, I'm going to keep pushing. Uh, meanwhile, over here, a couple of armies attacked this army, so I will have to retreat over here and uh, send in a new army up north. Uh, send Ulpia Victorus himself as well as we can send Legia 1 Minerva and we can also send um, Legia 2 Italica so let's actually do that let's actually move uh, Legia Ulpia Victorus a little bit outside and if we can all right I think we should be in reinforcement range so that is definitely kind of good actually we can move legio one minerva in this direction and now we should be able to push into Burdorgis as well as bells in the next turn which is kind of what we need in order to further weaken the way we are um, while over here this faction is still alive but it's taking a bit of casualties go ahead get that hundred percent auto resolve it's always welcome and uh, we are eventually going to move back towards Ubursus. Uh, go ahead, give him the army traditions. And uh, meanwhile, I could potentially attack with Legio 10 Gemina. And I think I am going to go ahead and do that. Pretty much wipe out this faction. Uh, taking a bit of attrition in that frigid cold north of Germania, unfortunately. And... Uh, with that we're done quite well we're gonna move back towards Tolifordum it'll take a little bit more attrition unfortunately uh, but it's nothing we can handle we can get some replenishment rate going meanwhile over here in Flevum we can put this army into the port he should be able to replenish a fair bit and once he does replenish in the next turn we can move him all the way down towards Atuatica Tungururum meanwhile we can move Legio 17 Germanica back into uh, Magna Germania. He's going to take a slight bit of attrition uh, as it is very cold up in the north. And if your army doesn't walk exactly in line with the roads, you will be taking a little bit of attrition. However, that being said and done, let's see if we can actually reach across into Lupfurdum. I don't think we can, so what we're going to do is we're simply going to auto-resolve this one. It's a pretty bad auto-resolve, but I don't mind doing it. Unfortunately, I have lost a legion uh, doing so, and we're going to peacefully occupy it. Uh, meanwhile, Legio Gemina has uh, kind of increased, so let's go ahead and give him that army traditions. As well as replenishment rate for the general and army upkeep. Uh, pretty much in the next turn what we can do is march Legio 7 Gemina all the way down in order to uh, You know rehire that lost uh, Legionary unit All of that being said and done, maybe we can just push a little bit closer towards Lepoldum and uh, Yeah, pretty much things seem to be looking quite good over here Meanwhile, need a little bit more or better replenishment over here. So let's put him in a Kunkum. Hopefully he has enough 
proletari and they do so that is good news which means we should technically be able to replenish both of these armies here during the winter uh, with that being said and done we have managed to establish our Elba River Carpathian uh, range frontier as you can see it's a very short frontier which means we can pretty much uh, secure our borders very easily as you can see already for the most part we have uh, at least 50% of the border surrounded by allies uh, whereas the other 50% uh, are controlled by the Swebi and the Arii but not for long all right welcome to the next turn an assassination plot and we are taking a little bit of attrition due to our supply issues over here which makes no sense because we do have a supply pit over here which should be supplying us However, I'm not sure we have very less supplies over there, which is why uh, we are taking a fair bit of attrition over there. However, that being said and done, let's actually move our armies into different regions. And uh, we are taking attrition over there as well, which is rather unfortunate. Uh, what we are going to do instead is kind of move up our armies over there. Move up uh, Augustus as well. Move up Legio 1 Minerva. Augustus can go ahead, auto resolve that one, and uh, go ahead and liberate that faction. Meanwhile, we can send Legio 1 Minerva towards Belts. And uh, this is a bit of a concern because uh, we definitely want to get rid of the attrition over here. And uh, we really need to fix our supply situation in order to do so. So hopefully in a couple of turns we will be able to manage that. So for now we have to move down south towards Singidunum. And uh, that's not good because that's kind of uh, preventing our offensive. Um, meanwhile, up here can sort of kind of move this army towards Kasurgis. It's not going to be able to reach. That's not too much of a problem. Meanwhile, uh, we can go ahead and uh, keep pushing towards Vistula. As well as over here, we can go ahead and liberate. It's going to be a pretty tight auto resolve. So we're going to go full offensive. We might have lost. Oof, we lost a lot of legionaries in that. But it's okay because we can begin our long march home with this legionary. So let's go ahead and send him all the way down. Um, thankfully, uh, it's just a bunch of core legionaries and a couple of these Raytheon heavy auxiliaries which can be recruited in uh, Virunum. So nothing uh, you know, too drastic or nothing has been lost really. And uh, we are in quite a decent position. Meanwhile, we can keep moving Augustus all the way to conquer over there. And we can send Legia to Italica in that direction to conquer Belts. Uh, go ahead, give him the replenishment. And have a quick look at all of our characters. We, yes, we have leveled up all of our characters, which is great. Uh, meanwhile, uh, this army over here can potentially, uh, Legio 7 Germanica, can potentially move down south towards Bursis and you can go and garrison to live for them. So now we have a very secure uh, Germania Magna. Meanwhile, we can move Legio 18 Gallica into Aduatica Tungururum and uh, he can replenish over there. We do have Legio 19 as well. And uh, we eventually want to move him into Augusta Vindelicum. Excellent. Alright, with that we are going to have a quick look at our entire realm and try to upgrade all of the buildings that we can upgrade. Let's go ahead and do that. The Parthians are trying to establish a non-aggression with us. We are not interested. We are going to maintain a lack of non-aggression so that we have enough time for our diplomatic uh, penalty uh, for attacking them to kind of deplete. 
Um, while over here, what was I thinking of doing? Okay, go ahead, get that. And we could actually build a supply pit over here as well, as that will be a little bit important. Although, if we are stationed in Toliforudum, then supply pit might be all but useless. So, actually, let's send this army all the way towards Flevum. And, uh, yep. And that should uh, prevent the supply pit from being hampered. And accordingly, it should be able to even supply towards Eastros, which is kind of great for us. However, that being said and done, I'm going to go ahead and end the turn. And as you can see, uh, you know, we have reduced the Swabii to just a single province, uh, which we will be conquering very shortly. We are also going to conquer the Ingiones, as well as, of course, uh, liberate the last two settlements of the Arii. Uh, however, that being said and done, I'm going to go ahead and end the turn and I will see you all in the future. Alright, welcome to the next turn. We were attacked in the end turn and uh, Marcus Agrippa, I took an auto resolve and I took a fair bit of casualties from that auto resolve. So, um, just going to retreat him back. I mean, I could have fought the battle, but of course we are running t short of time, uh, time in this episode. So I decided instead to just go ahead and uh, kind of uh, auto-resolve that one. However, this army should be pretty weak now, which means we can keep attacking and slaving. And we are going to go ahead and keep attacking. And it should be 100%, which is great. And maybe we can even attack Bells. No, we cannot. We'll have to wait a turn before we can go ahead and attack Bells. Meanwhile, we're going to move towards Ascoclis, the last remaining settlement of the Swabi. Uh, up here in the north, we're going to move towards Vistula. And it is kind of undefended, which is kind of great. So we're going to go ahead and uh, attack it. Uh, we can't really uh, liberate it. So we are just simply going to raise it. And we are going to give it to, of course, uh, you know, whoever... Uh, ally could be so we could actually give it to uh, Rugion I think or maybe even better we could give it to the faction we released from Ascoclus. So things are looking good over there up in uh, Germania. Of course we are nearly completed with the conquest of Germania just the last three settlements uh, remain and of course uh, what we are going to do is uh, keep marching Legio 15 Primogenia down south. Want him to replenish. So let's go ahead and give him a couple more of those Ratian swordsmen and then move him into Cisalpina where he can get his regular legionaries. Meanwhile, we can move Legio 19 towards Augusta Vindelicum. He's taking a bit of attrition as well, so that is rather surprising. So let's move him all the way south towards uh, Korea instead. Meanwhile, over here, we want to move Legio 17 Germanica towards Kasurgis and uh, could kind of actually attack these armies over here. They should retreat, most likely. Fantastic. So that is really good, uh, which means we can keep pushing. Should be a very good auto resolve over here gonna keep pushing and with this army we're gonna keep pushing up north should be a great auto resolve fantastic and then we are gonna move eastwards towards Kronos excellent we are gonna move our army as close as possible to Istros and down south over here we have another army that can kind of move back up north and try to take out this Germanic army. Meanwhile, we have Legio 4 Flavia Felix that we can also move up to the north. And quickly go ahead and look at all of our settlements. Uh, we want to level up all of the buildings that we can level up. And once again, everything seems to be fine. So let's just fine-tune over there meanwhile over here we want to build up some more buildings and uh, we could build another supply pit over here to kind of help with our supply issue 
And meanwhile over here we better build just some random buildings to prevent the formation of slums. Excellent. And of course the final upgrade of Egyptus itself. Uh, which means we will be getting quite a lot. And go ahead give him uh, that over there. We're going to build another supply pit over there. So that uh, we can supply our armies in the Levant. Well, well that being said and done we can go ahead and end the turn. But before I go ahead and do that let's quickly level up any and all of our characters that can be leveled up. Uh, we have uh, the food over here. We can go ahead in that direction. Meanwhile, we have a bunch of legions that have leveled up. So let's actually go ahead and take some skills for them. We have Legia 2 Edvitrix as well who has leveled up. We can get the replenishment rate for him as well as some other abilities as well. The Pro Priorte of Latium has also leveled up. And uh, we can actually even give him the agricultural wealth, which is kind of uh, since Latium is kind of based on both. And uh, definitely we want to make sure that, you know, we can maximize both of our incomes. Although it does come at a cost to the other kind of income, it's kind of worth it in my opinion. So let's go ahead and do that. However, everything seems to be fine. We're just going to have a quick look of what's going on over here. Um, Alright. Pretty happy with that. Meanwhile, we should have Legio 18 Gallica over here. We can send him towards Uburzis. Fantastic. And in the next turn, we also kind of need to get this extra Legion for... Legio 7 Gemini, but we can kind of actually move him down south right now because we don't have any threats in the area. So we might as well just move him down south right now as Legio 17 Germanica doesn't really have to defend anything in the vicinity. Well, with that being said and done, I'm going to go ahead and end the turn and I'll see you all in the next turn which will most likely be the last turn of this episode. Alright, welcome to the final turn. We're going to take tax collectors. Some daughters have come of age, don't really care about politics. Not having a look at it anymore. We just uh, need to just keep checking if our political parties are loyal. That's the only thing we need to check. Apart from that, we don't really need to focus on our politics. Meanwhile, Legia 30 Ulpia Victress has finally reached its calculus. We're going to go ahead and liberate the faction. And this means that the Swaby countdown has begun. Uh, they will pretty much be completely, you know, wiped out. We can get some campaign range movement. Meanwhile, we have a general over here. We have the king over here. So let's go ahead and attack the king. Fantastic. And with that, we have wiped out the Sway Balls, which is also very nice uh, to kind of witness however uh, we don't need to move legio for flavia felix all the way up there meanwhile what we can do is also move legio one minerva down to the south we want to keep moving all of our legions away as possible so that they do not take a lot of attrition as uh, we are really in a tight spot as far as supplies is con uh, you know can um as long as we're con considering supplies, so definitely we want to, uh, you know, move out of the area as quickly as possible so that we can get some supplies up and running. Meanwhile, over here, uh, we're going to move Legio 15 Paramigi Nia back towards Sisalpena, and we're going to do the same for Legio 7 Gemina. We can go ahead and recruit Legio 7 Gemina as well as we can go ahead and recruit. Uh, Legio for Primogenia and uh, what's going on? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right, we do need one more, uh, you know, cohorts of the Tungororum Spearmen. So we have to eventually move Legio 15 Primogenia all the way up to Augusta Trevororum, and that's a little bit of a nuisance. Well, with that being said and done, let's have a quick look at Legio 1 Minerva and uh, 
basically one two three four five six seven eight okay eight we need to move him towards Delminum so that he can get his two missing legionary cohorts meanwhile the army in Singadum is doing well it's replenishing and uh, all the way over here we could potentially attack this army and we will be able to subsequently wipe out the Ingeonis and uh, that's great as always we want to move this army into Ascocalus so that he can replenish and we're going to gift it to the Ascocalus as well wonderful now that being said and done we can go ahead and attack bells uh, it's a very good auto resolve uh, so let me actually move all the way up to Kronos the next turn it is gonna be winter so let's just go ahead attack bells and we're gonna liberate the faction once again and there we go that's it faction has been liberated we're gonna move all the way up towards Kronos and uh, prevent of course our attrition from happening meanwhile with belts we have a new faction Quados and uh, over here we can ask them to join the trade agreement which is kind of nice which means that the REI are left with only Kronos left and if you take a look at the map you can see we're pretty much secured on northern frontier we have a bunch of one single province miners and eventually we're going to start breaking off the military alliances because these guys are busy attacking each other, which is kind of fine. I don't mind them, you know, playing whack-a-mole with each other. As it is, of course, divided at Impera, and we're keeping them divided and discontiguous. Meanwhile, our own realm is uh, quite united and firm. And uh, pretty much we have established uh, the ideal uh, border for the Roman Empire especially when you consider their northern border uh, we have secured the Elba River Carpathian Mountain frontier as well as we have secured the entirety of the uh, British Isles so this Roma will last for a long time to come uh, the only remaining threat for this Roma is the Parthian Empire itself which we will promptly be attacking in the next turn or sorry in the next episode and we have a lot of Morian allies within the region a lot of 41 stacks so they should be able to give a very decent fight to the Parthians uh, they might be a little bit on the back foot because the Parthians tend to be very good in the hands of the AI however um, you know considering the fact that we are also going to be attacking from the western front um, it should put Parthia on the back foot and ideally in the north what we are going to do is we're going to try to focus on breaking up Scythia as well as perhaps Chorasmia uh, this province over here or this region Actau in Chorasmia so we will be sending two kinds of invasion forces one that moves into Scythia maybe two to three legions and meanwhile we'll be sending five six seven eight how many other legions we have into Parthia itself pretty much destroying the faction as quickly as we can in the next episode however that being said and done I think I'm done for this episode so I thank you all for watching hope you all enjoyed and if you like the video then like the video and don't forget to subscribe if you are interested for more peace and love